All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I would give you guys a really good demonstration of some of the things that I do in the spring every single year. These are like maintenance type tips, things that are really important to do for the container fig trees to get them off on the right foot every single year. So one of them that we do here is a process called thinning. We've talked about this a lot in depth and I have a, myself a tree right here that I think is a pretty good accurate demonstration of what thinning really will accomplish here. And that's by thinning out some of these new shoots, we're then directing the energy where it should go to get us a more healthy, more productive tree over the season. So you can see that there's a lot of shoots that are coming out here at lower points. You can kind of barely make them out because a lot of that sap flow is going all the way up, right? It starts down here at the roots and it makes its way up at the beginning of the season to the tips of the tree to put out the most vigor, the most healthiest growth here at the tips because they're very apical dominant. There's a lot of auxin, it's a plant hormone which suppresses a lot of that lower growth. So a lot of the lower growth, although it's growing right now, if we fast forward maybe three months from now, a lot of that lower growth just won't have fruit on it. And uh, as a result, it's kind of just a wasted energy for the tree. When we could have had, instead of having this lower shoot, kind of take away some energy from the stuff up here, this could have been a lot more productive and actually put out some good fruit for us. So I have to make a judgment call here and I have to determine, well, how many shoots do I want? How many fruiting branches do I want for the size of the pot, for the shape of the tree? What is the uh, dimension of the tree? Because we can use this thinning process to shape the tree, right? We don't necessarily have to be doing too much pruning because we can always come in here and say, you know what, I don't like this shoot here. I'm gonna break this off because I don't really want it to grow this way. I'd rather have them all grow this way or, you know, I don't want any crisscrossing. I don't want anything shading each, each other out. I wanna have the most productive branches possible, right? So we can always do that now if we want it. I will take out, and it's maybe a bit difficult to tell on the camera, but I am gonna take out some of this lower growth here, particularly on this shoot, because this is so low. This is gonna get all the dominance and the energy up here. This is kind of just trying to catch up. So I'm gonna leave only two shoots here at the top because the, the shoots at the top have all that energy. They have all that vigor. The growth tips specifically do, and they're basically going to take over and these shoots really probably won't fruit for me. If they do, I'll be happy about it. Um, it's a nice bonus, but this is really just trying to catch up to the overall size without having to prune everything so low to match the same height as this particular branch. Some of these other ones down here, we're gonna, we're gonna just take these off. And we do this with our thumb. There's really no special way to do this. Coming in here, breaking them off with my thumb. And that's really all that there is, is just coming in here and making a judgment call. There's always just too many shoots because the fig, when it wakes up, has so much energy and so much sap flow that it tries to put out growth every which way and every place it can. And I'll tell you, it's just not recommended. So this is a 10 gallon size pot. So I really should only have about 10 fruiting branches. I'm gonna see if I can do 12 this year to see if I can get away with 12 and we're gonna see what happens with this tree. Again, it's just really a judgment call. I'm gonna take off this branch here, even though it's quite vigorous, it looks like it would do well for me. This one's growing towards the center of the tree. So is this one, this one's too low. This one in the back is too low. So we've got, you know, in total here, and I could come through again if I want, we have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've got about 16. I still have to go lower here. So I'm gonna take this off. That's 15, 14. I'm gonna take this one off. That's 13. Cause this one, even though it's pretty high up, it's not really doing all that much. It just doesn't seem to have the vigor maybe as some of these lower shoots. Sometimes you may have a lower shoot that in a sense actually um, is a lot healthier, right? It may have less fig mosaic virus to it and therefore is a, is a 
really just a healthier shoot. So I just took off a number of them. I think we got down to 13. I think I'm happy with that. I can come back and reevaluate this and make another judgment call in maybe a couple weeks. Now, another springtime task that I like to get through here is at the soil level, we have suckers that come up every single year. These, you can let them grow and they'll turn into a fig. You can propagate this. You can even pull it out sometimes with enough years that go by. You can get some roots that are attached. But this is, of course, taking away some energy from the top of the tree. So even with all this apical dominance, believe it or not, there is all these shoots that come up sometimes. They form a lot of, a lot of buds down there at the soil level. It depends on the tree. depends on, you know, kind of what's going on. So, you know, that's just one of those things that you kind of have to watch out for. In addition, I love to take out all the weeds. We don't want to have any competition, any of that taking away energy from the shoots, right? We just went through this thinning process. Why would I have something taking away the health and the vigor of my plants? So another thing here we're gonna do, over here we have some older, well not older, but we have some trees that have been in the greenhouse for quite some time. And what they, all of them need really in the spring is enough water. And we've, you know, it's really simple. We just wanna keep the soil moist at all times here, guys. Um, the rain is probably enough here in this climate to achieve that, so I'm not really all that worried about it. Well, something over here that I'm going to be doing is feeding all these trees. A couple feeding lessons here. We need to feed them right off the bat, right away in the beginning of the season, as soon as they start waking up. Those are just leafing out. These already have fruit on them. I should have fed these guys in the greenhouse a lot more than I did. It's just that I couldn't get to all of them. They all leafed out and created such an issue. So. These guys, I like to do four to six feedings every year. Heavy feedings. They're in containers, they need a lot of food. Ideally, you have something that's fast acting, a liquid fertilizer. I use something that's similar to Miracle Grow that you just mix in with your water. Uh, or you can use something that's organic, like the Alaska Fish Fertilizer. That stuff works fantastic. Um, so, either one, gotta be fast acting. What you want in the nutrients is like a 10. Four, eight, okay? If it deviates from that, it's all right. I'm using, and I've used this for years, as a 9.45.15. And I've realized that's probably not ideal. It's probably not. Um, we want a lot of potassium, we want a lot of nitrogen. That nitrogen is gonna give us the shoot growth that we want, and that's gonna control a lot of the productivity for the years, that annual nitrogen that we give these trees. So again, four to six feedings, don't go too far into the season. Don't get too crazy with the feeding. The more food we have, the more nitrogen specifically, actually the lower our fruit quality will be. We'll have a lot of cracking that'll be completely unnecessary later in the season. So don't get too carried away. Uh, also don't burn them, right? Another thing we're gonna be doing is a different type of feeding, which is a foliar spray. I have a product here in the sprayer it's called Dynagro Protect. And basically we foliar this on here, underside of the leaves, on top of the leaves. And this is again, a silica supplement and also a potassium supplement. This is really great for the overall health of our trees, which then if they're healthier, if they have a better immune system, basically, it's kind of what the silica does. Uh, even potassium, it just overall increases plant health, we're gonna have a higher productivity, right? It's kind of another form of thinning in a way is that we're getting the energy higher. So that's a big one that I like to do. We're doing that once a month for the entire season this year. It's not just a springtime thing. Um, let's see, what else are we doing? Okay, so we talked about the weeds, we talked about the water, we talked about the suckers, we talked about thinning. The last thing I want to do here is pay attention to the pest control. Yes, there is some pests that could be overwintering on these trees in the form of scale. This tree particularly has been hit hard over the years and they like to hide in these little nooks and crannies that inevitably form on our fig tree because the tree likes to put out this dead wood. Fig trees are notorious for putting out a lot of dead growth here. You can see like, here's a really good example. This entire length of the branch is dead. Um, you can do the scratch test and really find out, but 
I don't necessarily need to because I just have enough experience, but you can see that this branch right here is really where all the energy is going. Because there's no active bud above this particular growth, this particular section, the tree is no longer gonna support this growth anymore. So we need to cut this out. All the dead, diseased, or damaged wood, it's gotta come out, we cut it on an angle. Don't go too close to the branch, leave a little bit, but make a very clean cut. Because if you don't make a clean cut, this is what inevitably ends up happening. And you have some damage, places of damage, and even some holes in your tree that maybe is potential for bores, and overall probably lowers the vigor, like this cut right here, this is interrupting the nutrient flow, right? There's no cambium for this section of the tree. So this is not really what we want. It's not really good. It's also not pretty. Disease or damaged wood is really, really not good. So just, again, check out yourself here along the wood in different places. I like to give them a nice little rub down, even though I just sprayed that tree. Give them a nice little rub down and just see very closely if there is any overwintering pests. Um, if there is scale, as that's probably the biggest one, you might see some spider mites. Do yourself a favor and get either some neem, even just jet them all with some high pressure water, or you can get some horticultural oil, which will suffocate a lot of those overwintering pests on these trees. Big, big recommendation. Um, you don't wanna let that get out of control. And that's sort of it here, guys. I think that covers all the different things I go through here in the spring. I hope everybody enjoyed this one. You guys learned something. If you did, subscribe, like the video, and share it. And also check out our blog, please, figboss.com. You can subscribe down there at the bottom. I'm trying to drive a lot of traffic over there. And we will see everybody soon, all right? Take care. Oh, and also see us on uh, our social media, like Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you guys soon. All right, take care.